Like a rocket ship, we are powering through onto our second topic for quadratics. Yes, now this is very much in line with the Cambridge Essential textbooks. But uh, factorising is another one of those fabulous little subjects. Now, just to recap about factorising, what is this factorising all about? If you remember back to our previous lesson, we were talking about the idea that Finding the crossing points of quadratics on the x-axis was really important. And we sort of showed ideas that x plus 3, x minus 2 may have got some sort of link between what's inside those brackets and these little points here. And actually, that's the trick here. If we can actually turn a quadratic, which we know has something like 3x squared plus 4x minus 6 into this form here, then actually it's going to make our life a lot easier. And that's what factorising is all about. So the end game is to be able to turn a quadratic into some form of two brackets to then let us find these crossing points. But what does it actually mean to factorise? Well, me, I think of it as when you factorise, you're effectively taking outside a set of brackets terms which are common. And maybe I should have added here the most amount of things. You take as much out of a set of terms as you possibly can. Those things that are alike, right? You're effectively dividing each term by the highest factor. So if we look here, how many terms do I have? Two. They both hold an x. Do they both have two x's? No. And again, if you want to write this out longhand, that's effectively x times x plus x. So they each hold one x, which I'm now going to write outside a set of brackets. Well, x, one of those disappears, which just leaves me with an x inside. And this is where people go a little bit skewery, because I go, well, well, that's now disappeared because I've moved it outside. Yes and no. What we're effectively doing is, and I'm just going to rub this out again, is if we have this as x times x plus x, I'm saying x times what gives me x squared? Well, x times x. x times what gives me plus x, this plus x here. And hopefully if we look at it, we realize that's going to be plus 1. So now x times x does give me x squared. If we were to go and write it out longhand, and x times plus 1 is plus 1x. So yeah, we've returned back to the beginning. But that's completely irrelevant. It's not something we need to do. Right. Another way of thinking about it is actually if we have x squared plus x, and I'm moving x outside, we're saying, well, what is x squared? divided by x. Well, it's x. What is plus x divided by x? It's plus 1. Lots of ways of thinking about this. We get to a slightly more complicated example. Here we notice we've now got numbers and letters. Well, we've got a 3 and a 9. What is the highest factor of 3 and 9? Well, it's 3. I've got an x and an x squared. We've already realized that an x can come out of that. So we can now say, well, here's 3x. And I'm going to divide it by the factor I've taken outside. 3x divided by 3x is 1. And 9x squared divided by 3x gives me 3x. Our factorized form is 3x times 1 plus 3x. And when we get more complicated letters as well, it doesn't get any more complicated than that. Look. At each part, now there are two terms here. So if you look at that, there's one term, two terms. I've got an a squared there and an a there. So the maximum I can take out is an a. I've got a b and a b squared. The maximum I can take out is a b. And I've got a c in each of them, so I can take out a c. So when I do that, what do I get? Well, I get a times a will give me the a squared. b, c, that's it. That's just the first one. It's just a plus a is already outside, I've got a b squared, so I have to put a b in there, and a c, and it's just as simple as that. So factorization is just moving outside. This moves into, right, obviously, the idea that we're coming closer to grouping of terms. How many terms do you see here? One, two, three, four terms. Now, we like four terms, because if we notice here, how many terms did we have? We had two terms. There, we had two terms there, and we had two terms there, which allowed us to factorize. And, as I say, generally speaking, we like to factorize two terms at a time. We have four here, so I'm actually going to factorize the first two terms, 
and then the second two terms. And something quite interesting is going to happen. Now, yes, we've got an x cubed here, plus 4x squared, minus 3x, minus 12. Let's look at these things here. What's the highest we can take out? Well, this is a 1, and that's a 4, so the highest we can take out is a 1. I'm not going to write that. I've got x squared there and an x cubed there, so I can take out x squared. That leaves x plus 4. So that's the first two done. Now let's look at the next two. What have I got? Minus 3x minus 12. Well, there's no x's, there's no letters, but I know that minus 3 can be factorized in both of those. That gives me x plus 4. Now remember, that minus there has to multiply by something inside to give me a minus. We know that a minus times a plus is a minus. Did you notice what we happened here? Now the inside of those brackets are actually the same and it's no coincidence that they are. And when we're dealing with quadratics, we're actually trying to make them the same. We want them to be the same. Now you can say why. Did you say why? Maybe not. Well, because how many terms do I now have? If you say four, I'm really sorry you're wrong. There's actually only two terms, term one and term two. You're gonna say, blah, 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 but these brackets actually say, treat this whole thing as one thing. So because we've got a times there and a times there, this is one term. Right, how does that help anything? Well, when we have two terms, can we factorize? We can, we factorize. And what do you notice? Well, they both have this bracket, x plus 4. And when they are common, we move them outside of another set of brackets. So I'm moving the x plus 4 outside. What do I get left? I get an x squared, and I get a minus 3. And lo and behold, I have two sets of brackets multiplied by each other, which seems very close to what we're looking for when I said previously, we have, that's a three, that's the worst three in your entire life, so let's make that a three, All right? That's the type of format we need to help us find these crossing points, All right? Now, this x squared here doesn't quite look like the x. Don't worry about it, we'll come back to it later. But one more example, this looks really complicated, but again, I promise you it isn't. Why? Okay, first things first, I've noticed that this should be a positive, that's all good. Now. This looks complicated, but it actually isn't. We've still got four terms, so I can factorize in terms of pairs. We notice that the first two pairs, or first two terms, have x squared, which means that's got to be a y squared, and that has to be minus 1. And again, if you're not sure why, backtrack. x squared times y squared gives me that term. x squared times minus 1 gives me that term. Now, it's these terms that tend to confuse people royally. Why? Well, because they're like, nothing comes out of that. And I'm like, well, actually, yes, the number one comes out of that. It's really important. And I've left this plus or minus sign. There's got to be a sign there. But what is it going to be? Well, remember, we're using this first bracket to try and make the two brackets the same. We've got a minus y squared there, but I want it to be a y squared there. So it means I have to take out minus one. And how do we make a positive one from a negative one? we multiply it by negative one. As the check, are now the two brackets the same? Yes, they are. So that's a happy smiley face. Two terms, the brackets are the same. So we take them outside of a set of brackets and we write what's left. And now we have factorized the expression. The difference of two squares is really, really important. And we know how to use FOIL. Now, if I was to multiply this out using first, 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 second, I would end up with a squared plus ab minus ab minus b squared. And I'm imagining one of you is going to scream at me and go, no, 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 it's actually minus ba. Well, as I will scream back, not because that would be not funny. Uh, what is two times three? Hopefully six. And what is three times two? Also six. So multiplication can actually be done in reverse. So AB and BA are in fact the same thing, which actually then allows these two to cancel out completely. And we end up with A squared minus B squared. Now that's the order we would normally do things in maths, but what we do forwards in maths, we can actually do backwards. And we can say as an important result, that a squared minus b squared, when we have a square term minus a square term, we can actually factorize that without doing 
all of that malarkey we were doing earlier, right? So a plus b times um, a minus b is a squared minus b squared. But actually, this is the most important. When we have two squareds, as I say here, when we have two square terms and they are subtracted from each other, we can write that in a set of brackets. Now, what does that have to do with the price of fish? I hear a few scream. Well, let's look at this example. Is that a square term? Yes, because it's got a floaty to it. It must be a square term. But what about the number nine? Oh, hold on a moment. Nine's a square number. And if you're not sure what the square numbers are, one, four, nine, sixteen, twenty-five, thirty-six, and so it goes on. All right. So what does that mean? Well, that's the same as one squared, two squared, three squared, four squared, five squared. If you do not know your square numbers, I suggest learning them. They will become invaluable. So I'm now going to rewrite this as x squared minus three squared. Why? Because this is now very much a squared minus b squared. When we have a square term minus a square term, we can write it as a plus b multiplied by a minus b. What is a? a is in the position of x. a and x seem to be the same, so that's going to be x at the start of both brackets. And what is b? b is 3, so I'm going to do plus 3 and minus 3. Now, a word of warning. If there had that been x squared plus 9, I could not use this theory. It is quite specific that that has to be a minus sign. Let's look at this. People get very confused here. Now, 9 and 25, I've already said the square numbers. And you need to think that this is the same as 3a squared minus 5b squared. Now, as an aside, when you do 5b all squared, you can do it in a number of different ways. That squared actually squares both things inside, 25b squared. Or you can write it as 5b times 5b which is 5 times 5 times b times b, which is 25b squared. So, do I have an a squared minus a b squared? Yep, a in this case would be 3a, not at all confusing, and b in this case would be 5b, not at all confusing. So, we would do 3a plus 5b and 3a minus 5b. What about this situation here? Well, neither 3 or 27 are square numbers. Nope, but if I actually take 3 outside of a set of brackets, I get a squared minus 9b squared, and lo and behold, now I do, because I have 3 a squared minus 3b squared. I have a squared term minus a squared term. As long as we keep those in brackets outside, I get 3a minus 3b, a plus 3b. And I can get rid of my square brackets now to give me... Three brackets, a minus 3b, a plus 3b. Now, this is where we get to what I think is the most amazing part of this, which is called uh, the T method. Now, we have already said that when we have two terms, we can happily factorize them. All right? When we have four terms, we can factorize them. We do them in pairs. But what happens when we have three terms? Well, I call this the T method, and it was what I was taught at school. How many terms do we have here? We have three. Now I want to turn three into four. I need to turn three into four because I can't currently factorize this, right? I'd end up with a pair and a single and that doesn't make any sense at all. So what are we gonna do? Now the T method states this, when you have something in the form of AX squared plus BX plus C, draw a T and at the top, write the product of a and c. Now what that means is take the number in front of the x squared and the number at the end and multiply them together. So in this case it would be minus 8. Having done that you then find the factors of all that number, of all those numbers, and you'll see why in just a second. So the factors would be, well I always do 1 and 8, 2 and 4, 4 and 2, 8 and 1. Now they can't be factors at the moment because 1 times 8 would actually give me positive 8 and I need negative 8. So I'm going to make one side negative to make sure that when I put these two numbers together, they actually multiply. So, so long as when you go across the lines, they multiply, what has this got to do with the price of fish? Well, basically, you now look to add the two numbers and find the one which adds to minus 2. And as it turns out, minus 4 plus 2. 
So we multiply the first and last number. We find all of the, we'll call them factors, and we're looking for two that adds to the middle term. Why? Because we are now going to turn that one term, that x, that minus 2x, is that a minus? Wow, these pens are awesome, but I sh should really make sure that I uh, don't obscure it. So I need to turn 3 into 4. Remember, because once I've got that, I can do it. The x squared stays the same. The minus 8 stays the same. I am now going to turn minus 2x into minus 4x plus 2x. Now you're going to turn around and say, but why did I choose those two? Well, the reason I chose them, or well, the reason this works, is because I can now factorize these pairs and my brackets will end up being the same. So back to what we did a moment ago. Take out x from the brackets and I get x minus 4. Take out 2 from a set of brackets and I get x minus 4. And lo and behold, that's exactly what we're looking for. x minus 4 is now common to both, which means I can write x plus 2 inside. And, ladies and gentlemen, I have factorized. Now, if you had done that with any of these other terms, for example, x squared minus 2x minus 8, had we just chosen, for example, minus 2 and plus 4, x squared minus 2x plus 4x minus 8, well, those two do not add to make that. So that equation there is not the same as that equation there, and so we can't use them. So it's always a good idea to make sure that you check. I'm just going to adapt this question to make that a 1, Oof, because it won't work otherwise. So making this a 1, all right, and just writing the equation underneath, 2x squared plus x minus 15. We can cross that through. Same thing. First number times the last number. So that makes that minus 30. And I'm going to look at my factors of minus 30, which give me 1 and 30, 2 and 15, 3 and 10, 5 and 6. And now I could continue going down 6 and 5 and 10 and 3. But we notice that actually after a certain point, whoops, after a certain point, these start to repeat. I am looking for a pair of factors that when added together will give me 1, but when multiply will give me minus 30. And if I make all of these negative here, I notice that minus 5 plus 6 will give me plus 1. So the reason we do this is to make 3 into 4. So we get 2x squared minus 5x. Remember, we're getting that minus 5 from there, plus 6x. From there, minus 15, because the first and last thing stay the same. Does minus 5 plus 6 make 1? Yes, it does. Factorize in terms of pairs. So that becomes x. 2x minus 5. And what do we take out of 3? Gives me 2x minus 5. They are the same, so that's good. 2x minus 5. x plus 3. Factorize. All right, now method 3 and 4 advance. You actually... Excuse me, you actually get to a point where you may have to do that. But it's just a trick because maths is a big fat trick. This is a quadratic. I've got a square term, I've got an ordinary term, and I've got a number. Now you're going to say, well, hold on a moment, I've got lots of letters there. And just for, you know, I can rub that out to make it look clearer. What we do here is we say, why don't we let x plus 1 equal the letter A? So everywhere I see an x plus 1 in brackets, I'm going to make it the letter A. That would make that a squared, that would make that 2a, and that would make that minus 3. And I would go off and solve that. I'd have minus 3 here, and I'd have 1 and negative 3 there. That gives me the one I want. So I'd end up with a squared plus a minus 3a minus 3. I'd factorize my pairs, a, a plus 1, minus 3, a plus 1. And so I'd end up with a plus 1 a minus 3. Now that's not my answer. If you left it there, you'd unfortunately get loads of marks taken away because you made it easier for yourself and you said, well, let a be x plus 1. Having done that, I would then need to go back and put my a back or at least my x plus 1 back. So that would become x plus 1 plus 1. So I've just replace the a. Now notice I've put it in brackets, x plus 1 minus 3. Why have I put it in brackets? Whenever you are replacing one letter with more than one, always put it in brackets.
Multiply out the brackets, I get x plus 1 plus 1, x plus 1 minus 3, that gives me x plus 2, x minus 2, right? Much easier than trying to solve all of that in the state that it is. All right, thanks very much. Look forward to seeing you next time.